Welcome everyone to another observability lab. Today we are talking about the site reliability guardian. The guardian has been around for quite a bit. Uh, it has been used by our users to automatically validate any deployment or configuration changes based on a set of objectives, allowing you also to integrate this into your CI CD pipeline. But a lot of things are changing in Dynatrix. We're always innovating, and this is why I have Johannes with me. Hi, Johannes. Hello, hello everyone. Hey, uh, really cool stuff. Uh, updates constantly. And especially what I'm interested in, I want to know what are the new use cases and the new personas that I think we've identified to really leverage the site reliability garden in their day-to-day -day work. Mm -hmm. Perfect, yeah, that's the reason why I'm here. And I will uh, explain you what we have built. Uh, but before doing that, let me just briefly explain uh, the reason why. Mm -hmm. Actually, because uh, we in Dynatrace, um, we also see the need that we adopt and use the site reliability guardian. And this was um, discovered by our data science team they are using the site reliability guide in order to validate um, their uh, models mm -hmm. they use for Davis AI. And what they are doing is they improve the, the model, then um, fine tune it, and at the end they wanna check whether, for example, forecasting capabilities are as stable as they were before. Mm -hmm. And therefore they use um, metrics like, for example, this root mean square deviation metric. Mm -hmm. um, this is a data science metric in order to validate the performance of models. And this team was eager to figure out whether they are stable and no regression uh, is occurring. And therefore they, they set up a guardian. And after they have everything configured, they were actually struggling with defining the proper threshold mm -hmm. because at the end they did not know whether it's a 100 they can expect, whether it's 50, 10 or 0.2. Uh, they were really fighting with setting the, the proper thresholds at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And this was then one reason why we um, thought that it's definitely a good idea to invest in this direction to help also new beginners of the site reliability guardian to quickly get uh, started. Yeah, exactly. And uh, especially just to confirm from my side, this is great for the data scientist use case here, but for many users that are starting, right? we've been talking for years to get rid of thresholds that have to be specified manually. There are certain good reasons why their static thresholds still exist, but in many instances, you want the system to figure out themselves, right? We have an AI, come on, why not use our baselining and our AI to actually figure this out for them? Really great, and especially for new users, get a, get a, a start without having to worry about defining all these thresholds, yeah? Correct. Yeah, and the second uh, use case is then one we know from, from our beginnings with the Captain project mm -hmm. that it's also important that you validate against previous validations. You want to take a look on what happened before and now I will check whether I'm still uh, on the same quality level, security mm -hmm. level. And this is why it's important to also compare with the past and therefore give you this example where we see currently a situation where one measuring, one objective is above a warning threshold. Mm -hmm. Hence, you go to invest in improving this um, objective to go below the warning. Then you continue investing, you continue improving to go even further down, in this case, uh, on the response time. But for some reason, uh, let's say due to a change in the, of a library or dependency which was coming in, you again uh, went up in the response time. Mm -hmm. Even though not breaching the warning threshold, we still lost all the investment we did um, yeah. on the previous versions Hence, this was definitely too significant mm -hmm. um, to be not informed. And this is also where now um, this new capability of auto-adaptive thresholds can help you because over the time we are fine-tuning the threshold and so you at the end are protecting your security or performance improvements. Cool, so that's that would be kind of like the yellow line would kind of walk down as as the software gets better and better, we are also automatically adapting the threshold Correct. to say, hey, you know, we have a better software now than before, so we want to validate that any change will not significantly worsen that particular objective. True. That's yeah. cool. And yeah, this is what I also have summarized here, that we are now supporting these two use cases, whether it's the one from data science team, mm -hmm. in order to quickly get started mm -hmm. by uh, not defining a threshold, it's you get in a, into a learning phase first, mm -hmm. and once enough data is there, Davis takes over and derives the proper threshold for cool. you. Uh -huh. And as you perfectly explained uh, just a, a minute ago, 
uh, with the capability of automatically adapting the threshold, the yellow line goes down, goes down mm -hmm. in order to detect such anomalies or significant uh, changes. Cool. Hey, looks awesome on PowerPoint. How does it look in the product? <laughs> Let's just take yeah. a look. Let's take a look. <laughs> Therefore, I jump over um, yeah, to Dynatrace, where I have already the site reliability guardian open. And I just want to add new a new objective to an already existing guardian. Let's just go with that one with the card service. I go to the edit mode. And I want to now add a new objective for um, uh, the response time. I click here the add new objective button, give it a name, it's response time. And I paste my um, DQL query into uh, this, this form where we can see that the current uh, measuring is around uh, 92 mm -hmm. milliseconds. But yeah, this is the, the status quo, but at the end we don't really know whether it's good or, or, or worse. And we just hand it over to Davis and then Davis will derive for us the proper thresholds. Mm -hmm. And for doing so, you have now the option here to select auto adaptive thresholds. And you, in this case, you just have to select whether you are going um, to, pro uh, whether you wanna have uh, lower values or higher values. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's a response time Hence, it should be as low as possible. And that's it. That's it yeah. mm -hmm. uh, because now you see that here, the thresholds are indicated with, with a learning icon, meaning that it takes now five iterations until enough data is there to set the proper threshold, uh, which will then be uh, used for the next validation. Mm -hmm. One thing that I want to quickly highlight here, you had an existing guardian with four objectives already specified. That means you can add, uh, I think, up to 50 objectives right now. You also showed how easy it is to create a new one, just taking a DQL query. Uh, you are using metrics here, so uh, from time series data, but it could also come from logs, from traces, from busy events, from yep. anything. And then I really love now the new threshold definition button, either no threshold, which was a thing we had in the past, mm -hmm. kind of informational only, static thresholds. For certain things, it makes sense to have a static threshold if you have a clear objective that you cannot cross and then the auto-adaptive. Correct. Nice. Yeah, when I now save this one mm -hmm. and also click on validate, then I'm kicking off a manual validation, but uh, in most mm -hmm. cases you wanna also have it automated. Yeah. This is where uh, workflows jump in and take over the automation yeah. of your guardian, but I'm now doing it manually. And after, a few seconds, we will then see uh, data coming mm -hmm. in and Perfect. validations are running. Perfect, awesome. And as you said, right, typically you would automate this. Um, you would automate it uh, as part of a workflow that can be triggered either on the schedule or on an event like a deployment event, a configuration change event. And uh, I guess this color now that indicates that, uh, what does it indicate? This one now indicates that this objective is still in an info state mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it's currently in a, in a learning phase. Yeah. And after five validations, it will be activated. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. And therefore I have already prepared one guardian, which shows you that. Therefore I just quickly jump over to the payment service here. And here I already did the exercise of running five validations and then after the fifth validation, mm -hmm. it automatically gets active and um, yeah, then also validated against the thresholds that were derived from Davis. Very cool. And that means uh, just, like, just like in the past, all of the results that we're seeing here are stored in Dynatrace also as events, as, as a site reliability guardian events. Uh, that means all of the Results that are visualized here nicely in the table can obviously be visualized and used in, and queried in any type of form. That's what I really love about this as well. Awesome. Um, I talk with a lot of people that are automating also the configuration mm -hmm. um, of all of their observability. Uh, how about this? Can I configure these things also through code? Sure, sure. Um, everything is, is supported using uh, our configure code approach with Monaco or Terraform. It's basically setting one value uh, on true and mm -hmm. then you have also the, the thresholds activated when you're going with a configure code approach. Configure cool. code. Cool. 
Cool. Perfect. Uh, anything else? When, what I noticed actually, and actually let me go back to the, uh, to make it a little bigger. Uh, by the way, you can see how we're playing with the new video setup here. Uh, there's a new logo. Oh, at least it looks like there's a change in color. Yeah, it changed a little bit. It's actually not a new one. It just uh, got a new iteration mm -hmm. and evolution, mm -hmm. so to say. But we still stick to our core values, which are um, the fast forward sign, which, see in, in, which you see in the icon, uh, indicating that we want to help um, users to quickly get a new release into production. And then the second symbol is the DevSecOps loop, as we are a good best or best practice when it comes to DevSecOps. Mm -hmm. I think that's also an, another great reminder, folks. The Guardian is not just there for validating your error rate, your response time, the number of log messages that are coming in or critical logs. All levels, all signals of observability that also includes security can be included here. So for instance, you, you mentioned earlier, you change a library and all of a sudden maybe the response time degrades, but maybe that library is also including and introducing a new vulnerability. Mm -hmm. You can use the Guardian to automatically validate that any changes is also not introducing any new security vulnerabilities. So that's also I think a good a good highlight. Awesome. Um, hey, with this, uh, I would say thank you so much. I know uh, you will be back, obviously, because yeah. uh, there's so much cool of innovation coming out. We will do more of these videos. Hopefully, folks, you find those uh, insightful. Uh, Johannes, where can people go if they have more questions? Go to the community. There, it's the best place to either drop a question or to ask for support. We are constantly watching it and, and helping where we can. Mm -hmm. And first step, if you have not yet installed the Guardian, go to your Dynatrace tenant, go to the hub, search for SRG or site or Guardian, and you'll find the Guardian and just click on the install button. All right. Hey, with this, Johannes, thanks. Cheers. Bye.